President Mohamed Buhari has extended the lockdown declared in Abuja as well as Lagos and Ogun states to prevent the spread of the dreaded coronavirus for another 14 days. Buhari said this in a nationwide broadcast on Monday. He said the decision to extend the initial 14-day lockdown was taken, having carefully considered the briefings and report from the presidential tax force and the various options offered. And joining us live via Skype is legal practitioner Barista Monde Ubani. Thank you, Barista, for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And still with me in the studio with Reputation Manager tu Tubosun Akeju. Thank you, Tubosun, for staying still with us. Thank you very much. Now, Barista Ubani, you did watch the presidential address on the extended um, order by the president, another 14 days to, to forestall the spread of COVID-19. Prior to this um, address, before the first order was given, many Nigerians felt there were many things that were not considered before the secession order came into effect. Now, how do you react to this? Well, I, I wasn't surprised uh, for the extension uh, because I have uh, looked at uh, other channels in the world. I'm talking about television on, and, and, and radio news from all over the world. Uh, the, the stories are not something that is very palatable. Uh, we are still experiencing large number of deaths in, in some of these countries. And of course, no, no country have actually uh, resumed uh, economic activities. Even America that is uh, uh, trying, the president is trying to say that very soon they will resume economic activities. And that again has been contradicted by the scientists and experts who say that he cannot uh, at this juncture, when uh, deaths have been announced virtually every second to resume any economic activity. So I wasn't surprised that the president of Nigeria uh, uh, probably will, in his address, which is what he has done, uh, extended the lockdown to another 14 days. The only thing that shocked me with the address that I have just listened to is that, that is, uh, the address is uh, bereft of any measure that has actually been announced and put in place as palliative for the poor. Uh, and I'm also surprised for the first time I'm hearing that the register for the poor in Nigeria is just 2.6 uh, million. I don't know whether it was a mistake, but has now been expand. We will expand uh, that list to include uh, one extra million of the poor people, uh, according to the president. So I don't know whether that statistics is correct. So I'm, I, if I'm to believe that the poverty capital of the world has only 2.6 million uh, poor Nigeria with over 200 million Nigeria, that means that uh, that is clearly a, a miracle. Uh, so we need to get the clarification uh, from the president with regards to the population of the poor they are, they are trying to cater for. Yeah, I think that they've, they've been able to reach out to 2.5 um, Nigerian households and an additional 1 million households will also be catered for um, for this extended two weeks period. And if we were to go by the statistics put out there, we have about 86 million of Nigerians who uh, are below the, the poverty line, live in extreme poverty. So I wouldn't want to agree that po possibly um, that was, that, uh, because we can't for sure say where the, that data was gotten from, how um, those 2.5 households were, where the data was gotten and the, the sharing, the distribution going on. Now, would you want to agree with what the barrister just said, that the, the palliatives in place still doesn't suffice, given there was a, there was a two weeks now and now another two weeks. Let's, let's begin to look at the, the palliatives. One would have thought, uh, there's a whole lot of been put in place by way of palliatives than just the distribution of foods, relief materials to an additional one million homes. Um, I, I agree with the barrister and I, w I also would have thought that the numbers we'll be talking about will be somewhere around, you know, 40 to 50 million homes. And, um, you know, because again, when you look at um, the data that we had even before COVID-19, which has said that Nigeria, had, there were about 86 million Nigerians yes. that were in the poverty bar bracket. So when you have problems like this, m m you know, very sure that that number would have increased. And like I said um, on the previous program, that when you look at those people who are involved in the gig economy and the informal sector, who are not able to really, really, you know, go and do what they have to do now, um, you know, have now been added to that bracket because now they can't really, they don't have the resources to feed. Having said that, um, and I, I like to play a bit of the devil's advocate here because the lockdown we're experiencing right now is in Lagos, Abuja, and Ogun State. State. Yeah. Um, all the parts of Nigeria, though they're maintaining social distancing, are not on complete lockdown. So if you look at that, the places where you have a concentration of those who need the palliatives are actually more in those three states that I have mentioned because those are the ones that, that you know are feeling the impact the most. It doesn't mean that people in other parts of Nigeria are not feeling the impact, you know. So I would say that it might be 
the, that might be the consideration why the number is that low. But I still think that all of us will have to come together and make this work and ensure that staying back at home, because like, I mean, we're talking about food and all of that. There are other unintended consequences. You know, I was speaking to someone on one of this action group, you know, and we we're having a conversation and she was saying that there's been an increase in the number of domestic violence. You know, there's been an increase in number of child, child abuse. You know, there are other unintended yes. cases that we're going to talk about. I do not want us again to get fixated on just analyzing the problem. I think that where we are now is a situation where we need to start preferring the solution. How do we make the data cleaner? Do you want to go to telcos? Do you know, do you want to go to other, you know, um, do you want to go to the hospitals? Do you want to go to the, you know, primary healthcare centers and start to map those people that we believe, you know, will be in their need of some of this um, um, our palliative and then we can, you know, take care of them in the next 14 days because when this together. All right. Now, Mr. So Bonnie, I, I just want to come to you now and ask you, were you, were you completely impressed um, where you, where your fears are laid? And do you think there was so much, uh, the president did say in his, in his, in his, in his address tonight that, that brings about hope and reassurance to the Nigerian people that they're on top of this matter? Uh, well, apart from the, the measures uh, they, they have uh, announced with regards to uh, the health uh, measures we need to take in order to keep safe, like issue of social distancing and then total lockdown. Uh, there is no much hope from the address that I hear tonight. There is nothing that is very concrete that the president has actually made mention of by way of palliative measures that will make people who depend on daily sales, on daily businesses, on daily trading to stay home additional two weeks without any person making arrangement for their food, making arrangement for money for them to feed. Because hunger is even more deadly, as somebody has written, than, than, uh, than, than the virus itself. And that's why you have discovered that it's a total breakdown of law and order in some of the parts of Lagos. I don't know whether you have probably seen the videos. A lot of places now no longer sleep in the night. They don't sleep with their eyes too closed. You know, they, 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 they now organize uh, security arrangement, which uh, is by turn now, men have to stay outside from morning, I mean, from night to the day, daybreak because of the kind of uh, robbery incident and breaking of stores and homes that is actually taking place because of hunger. A lot of people are using this opportunity now to commit all manner of crime. I mean, I'm talking about people who depend on daily daily income, the agueros, you know, that depend on going out for daily pay, and then the people that do daily trading and all that. And you are now asking them to stay for two weeks extra. And the two weeks they have already stayed, you can see the impact now that people are really no longer safe and all that. So I didn't see much that the president has said in this speech that actually gave me hope that you understand the implication of what we are into. I agree that we need to stay home, to stay safe in order to avoid the stem, to stem the tide of spread of the virus. But I think he has not handled the issue of hunger, which is what other nations have actually done. They have asked them to be, they have been total lockdown in most of these developed nations. But they have taken time to make adequate arrangement for homes, you know, for food to be delivered, for, for people to have money to buy food and all that. But there is no such, you know, corresponding act here. You are asking people to stay home and you are not making adequate arrangement. There is nothing that the president said tonight that actually gives me any hope that you understand the people is ruling, you understand the people is governing, and I have accurate statistics to really take care of those who will stay at home extra for two solid weeks. And then to disagree with my brother there who says it's only Lagos and Ogun State and FCT that is total lockdown. So Almost all the states, my state, state, state there is total lockdown. lockdown. Yeah, order, in Apaibom, yeah. it's total lockdown. Almost all the other states in the federation have taken the heat of the federal government in announcing total lockdown in the various states. So it's not only Lagos, Ogu, and the, and the FCT. And the federal government has actually approved those total lockdown by the various state governors. So it is important we understand that it's not only these three states that are having total lockdown. All other states, almost all the states in the federation, even Quara, Quara is a total lockdown also. There is no movement. There is no exit. There is no entrance. So it's important that government understand what is actually going on and address those issues of security implication and issue of hunger that is actually spreading all over the country. Now, now Bryce, Monday, um, in, in his address, he did make mention to the Ministry of Agriculture, I mean, giving orders to what the Ministry of Agriculture should start focusing on, and also, also the ministries uh, to de develop a comprehensive policy to save economy. Now, all this to me seems like a post-COVID-19 um, situation, and many will argue the fact that not so much of presently what should be done was said, and many, many of the address pointed to what should be after COVID-19. Was this out of place? 
it's clearly out of place. You understand what, really what I'm trying to say. I had expected the president within these two weeks to have developed a very comprehensive package of what it should be. Now they know they will extend this particular lockdown. One would have expected a very comprehensive palliative measures to be announced by the president himself. But we're talking about ministers coming together in order probably now to formulate policies post post uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, era. And that is, he has not addressed the present situation. He has not addressed the issue of security implication of what he's asking people now to do. Another two weeks extension. He has not addressed those issues and all that. So to me, this particular address really fell short of expectation of a president who really, you know, understand what the time is. You know, the time now is that Nigeria is in their need of government, uh, you know, uh, 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 palliatives, palliative measure, because 88 some per thousand million Nigerians are living be below poverty line, and you have to take care of them. Now, that does not include those who were going out before, and depending on daily pay, we are, you didn't include them. Now you have so many of them now you have to include who we are really not within your poverty level because they have daily things they do. But now you have asked them to be locked down in their homes and be held up in their homes and they have nothing doing. And you do not in any way make adequate arrangement for what they will be eating within the time you ask them not to do any business or go out for their daily survival. So I don't know. Honestly, those measures that the president mentioned were just post and not the existing, the time which we are in, he, has, he didn't address any of those uh, uh, fears and uh, those uh, uh, concerns. All right, Barry Samon Obani, thank you for your time and for your contribution on News on the Hour. My pleasure. All right, Tumas, so I come to you quickly. You just want to react to a few things um, the barrister did say. Um, not so much about the present time, what we're going through was, was actually addressed in, in the presidential speech this evening, and some of them seem like to be, you know, the post-COVID-19 um, era. How do you react to this quickly, please? So while I, I, you know, I understand the need to really focus on, you know, the present situation of COVID-19, I think it's not out of place to start to think of a post-COVID-19 Situation. Life, life after life after life the after pandemic. COVID, because yeah. again, if you look at the best case scenario here, um, in two weeks' time, if we if the, um, the the growth rate and the recovery rate is where it is um, in, as at today, in the next um, fourteen to twenty days, we should have completely you know arrested the situation of COVID-19 in Nigeria, if it stays like that. Um, you can see the decline in the number in Lagos, even though there were two days that got everybody worried again. And that's the epicenter. The recovery rate is very encouraging, about 30%. I remember that they, they, do, they, they did say not, not so much of Except. testing kits are available. And so the, the number could so, actually so, surpass what it is we so have it, right now. You're right. We, yes. we might not be testing that much. But let me tell you, we, ha we also have in a unique situation. Um, if you look at a good number of the people, who, the cases we have in Nigeria, vast majority of them, and I think from the data that I have, about 60 to 70 of them are not community infections. There are people who traveled to high-risk areas and came back to the country with the symptom. So why we might not be testing so much? Again, I like to focus on where we have strength. What I think we should put a lot of focus on is, yes, let's try and ramp up testing, but if that is proving difficult, let's use technology to do a lot of contact tracing. Because if we're able to trace a lot, if we're able to do an effective tracing, then we can come to the conclusion that we will not have a community spread even post COVID-19. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely also very, very important to start to look at. So in the scheme of things, if government feels that in the next two weeks, barring any surprise, we'll be done with this thing, then it, it might as well start to plan, so what do we do when we're out of? Because Sub-Saharan Africa is, going, is projected to go into recession for the first time in 25 years, and you know, that's a big deal. And then with the, with the fact that you know, globally we're having issues, you, yes. know, you don't want to start to look at you know, the, the, the size of the problem that we're about to face. Agriculture is down, trade you know, is down. Those are the number one and number two biggest employer of labor in Nigeria. So because we are in, and then you have the crude oil falling way below. The, the world the is in a similar but, global recession exactly. by now, so, and so we're not exempted from it's that. It's not out of yeah. place for the president to start to think about it. As a matter of fact, I think by now, you know, they should be closer to having our post COVID-19. Um, 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 oh, Tuba, Tuba, thank you for staying with us on News on the Hour and for your contribution. Thank you.